I spend a lot of time talking about your resume. Mm -hmm. Now you see why I'm so anal about it. Because if it doesn't get past here, you know, for a lot of people, game over. Okay? But then, I'm not going to talk about assessments right now, but I'll come back to it. Imagine you get selected for an interview. What can happen there? But I'm saying, but what, what, what can happen if you get selected for an interview? You get another interview, you get the job, or not. Yeah, or not. Yeah, because, this, so this is where things go wrong. So these are the two, you know, if you think about from an engineer, just from a process standpoint, you look at processes to figure out, okay, where can things go wrong? And then where do I need to mitigate my risk? Where do I need to show up? Because these are the weak points in the game, in the process. So if you're not tight here, you're dead in the water. Even if you make the pass here, P&G has another screen to get you, just in case you got past here with a fancy resume, because you can pay for somebody to jazz your resume. Like, it's easy to make you look good on paper. But these assessments usually weed that out. But then people feel, they get through that too. Sometimes people can game that every now and then. And then you get to interviews. So then that's when it's <laughs> more difficult to game with, with a top company. Because guess who's usually doing the interviews? Hiring managers. But even the recruiters, what type of background do you think they probably have? Sometimes. Sometimes. Mostly. But what other backgrounds can they have? Business background. Yeah. Just back in the game. Like, don't ever go into it and just think, oh, it's just a recruiter. <laughs> just a recruiter. Just a recruiter. I mean, these people are paid to school. Let me tell you something. I used to be a recruiter. And I respect the game because I didn't come in from the traditional, you know, path. I didn't come in from an HR standpoint, right? So my mindset was different. But I met a lot of recruiters that came from the business. And they just say, hey, I want to be the, on the talent side now. Just like a former athlete just says, no, now I want to be a you know, talent scout for, for this team I used to you know, be an athlete for. So they know the game, they know what to look for. Also, at the NBA level, a lot of the recruiters, like myself, they had the NBA too. So it's like game recognizes game. So I can call bullshit. So really, this guy doesn't know anything. I can ask a lot of questions and now nah, you're not getting past me. Because I had a reputation. I had to protect my brain. Who do, you, who do you think my clients were as a recruiter? The hiring managers. The hiring managers. I supported them. They trusted me. They said if I sent somebody to them, I was only sending somebody that I said, you know what, I'm putting my neck on the line because this person is really tight. I know they're going to, man, they're going to impress the hiring manager because I knew the business. I knew the supply chain, I knew the ops, I knew the marketing, I knew all of it. What happens if I start sending them a lot of bad candidates? My brand gets ruined, and then what happens? Yeah, there you go. Basically, just that nice way I'm gonna get fired. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, he's very nice, but that's what happens. So learn the rules to play the game, okay? But don't worry, I'm gonna teach you the game. Don't worry about it. Teach you the game. But you gotta avoid the pitfalls, all right? And the pitfalls are not doing your homework up front. The pitfalls are going in with the mentality that, oh, man, I've been here before, I can do it. I've always been successful before. No, I have time for all this peer coach mock interview and all this one-to-one -one practice and all these workshops. Screw that. I'm not doing it. I'm just going to practice work. I got a test. I've got other stuff. I, got, I came here to do an MBA. I didn't come here to learn about how to get a job. I already know how to do that. If you take that mentality, this is where you're usually going to get tripped up because you don't respect the game. You don't look at it like a business process. You think it's just something. Oh, it's, just, it's just recruitment. No, it is a business process. I mean, if people get highly paid corporate recruiters, you know, there's a whole global talent acquisition division. These are people that manage leadership development programs. I mean, respect the game, okay? I'm gonna keep hearing me say that. Intro to the applicant tracking system. This is where you can get caught up, right? Because this is what companies want you to do. The normal process is basically they're saying from a company standpoint, and you gotta understand it from their standpoint. Their standpoint is, as a recruiter, I'm not going to interview 100 people. I'm not going to look at 100 applications if I'm trying to fill one job. Is that an efficient use of my time? So just like we are equipping you with technology to weed out all the jobs that you don't want to look at, because you, you, can you look at 100 jobs a day? Can you apply to 100 jobs? Do you want to work for 100 different types of jobs? I don't even know 10 employers. How can I apply to 100 jobs? Companies, they're like, I cannot filter through a thousand resumes. I'm not, no, I'm not looking at all those. What I'm going to do is filter on certain criteria 
And the way the applicant tracking system works, I have a lot of experience with them because I told you they used to be a recruiter. And so I would just filter out, I'd put all these little, little you know, keywords in and say, okay, I only want to look at the re uh, resumes that match the job description by a certain percentage. And I wouldn't even look at the rest. I would say, oh, okay, these meet my filter, top 20, not even looking at the rest. Uh, if I can get what I can out of that top 20, my job is done. Like, why do I need to look at the other 80? I, I don't. Now, does that mean the other 80 are bad? No, could be some gems in there. So what happened to them? Why didn't they get to the top 20? What could have happened? They couldn't make the requirements. They probably just didn't know how to write a resume. Let me tell you, everybody in this room is smart. A lot of you are smart. Would you agree or disagree that the resume you had before you started this program versus the resume that you have now, which one is better? Yeah. Which one do you feel better about? Yeah. Why? <laughs> no, I'm saying, why? Why do you? No, no, not that question. No, I'm saying, why do you feel better about your resume now? It's more alive. Exactly. You actually had time to think about, okay, why am I doing this? What am I trying to? I mean, you actually thought versus just blindly applying, which is what a lot of people do when they don't understand the art and science of what it means to put together a business level resume. And that's why I say you have to respect the game to understand the complexity. So people would enter here or not. So here, let's say something earlier that I, I didn't want to get that far yet, so I had to block them out. So I'm gonna give them this props. He was over here trying to, to say, hey, that's another process because they want you to go through this little, little, little wheel here. Apply, get screened, interviews. They, they want you to do that because it works for them. But do you really care about the convenience of the company and the recruiter? Or do you care about trying to get the job? So in that case, let me just go back here real quick. The company is saying this is the process for them. They're saying, look, we got 200 people. We're not looking at all of that because we're just trying to get to that one applicant. And so this process here is going to help us get to that one applicant, OK? And so this is why I say, welcome to the MBA job search game. Because you learn about the corporate recruitment game, your best defense is to have a good offense. So you need to say, you know what, I've got a game too. So the recruiter has their game. It's like cops and robbers. <laughs> it's like they adapt, you got to adapt. <clears throat> so you have diametric opposing games. Like, hey, okay, my NBA job search game has to trump your corporate recruitment game, or I'm screwed. So your game has to be better. And so going back to the core of what CMC pre-orientation was trying to instill in you, the personal brand is like your sword, uh, sword and shield. Like it all starts there. That's why you took career leader first. You know, I didn't, you know, career leader, it just gives you a foundation. Some of you, like most of you agree with the results. Some of you say, well, I don't know. But it's designed to say, look, let's help you establish this personal brand. Let's, let's start the building blocks to that personal brand. Getting your interests and skills and motivators. Then you actually went through a personal brand exercise activity where you had to inventory your skills. You went through all this, man, where is this going? It's because you had to understand who you are, what you uniquely provide, what benefits do people get when they talk to you, or hire you, or work with you. You got to clear, be so clear on that to where it's automatic, okay? And all of these six points are, are where that personal brand is going to show up, okay? It's going to show up on your LinkedIn or social media page. It's going to show up in your networking, how you talk, how you, you know, just interact with people, okay? It's gonna show up in pitching, okay? What are you gonna communicate in that pitch? And John is gonna take you to that tomorrow. Interviewing, definitely gonna show up there, okay? And it's gonna show up, resume, cover it, it will show up, okay? And so you have to choose the weapon that you're gonna use, right? And it's really all of them, but you need to know all of these are designed to get your personal brand to where? Where are we trying to move your personal brand from? Where? From here to where? The company. Exactly. To wherever your, your career goal is, wherever it wants you to be, which is definitely not sitting in academia for 10 years, right? <laughs> in terms of being a student. <laughs> so you want to get your brand somewhere. And there's a process to do that, OK? So let's get on networking for a minute. 85% or more jobs are found through the networking. Man, we are going to beat networking into your brain. 
But is networking asking for a job? No. Thank God. Thank God you did. You did, you did go through the activity. Don't, it's not even about asking for a job. It's about building the relationship that will eventually lead to that. But your primary objective is really information gathering, building relationships, learning about you know, a specific job or industry, uh, building advocates, people that will get you to the next referral or next level or, or just offer you advice. You're gonna get smarter when you network. And through that process, you will uncover the hidden job market, which is where the real fun is. Because in Karen and Terry, I'm gonna let her speak, so not, I'm just not gonna hog the plus. <laughs> She'll tell you that, and we I couldn't find a graphic to show you, but remember that little funnel I showed you? We had all the applicants come in one way. Well, that's what companies, <laughs> like when you see that, that's just like, that's, by the time a job hits the job, you know, boy, then that's where everybody's applying. But how you really want to do is find it before it even gets posted. And that's when you become top of mind, because people know who you are. Oh, Nick has been talking to me and just asking my advice, and keep me posting on how she's doing in, in B-School and you know, asking, you know, hey, how can she get better at this and da-da-da. And now some job comes open and then the first thing recruiters do or hiring managers say, do we, have, do, we, do we know anybody? Who do you know? Because if they trust you, they're going to say, hey, recommend somebody that you know first because we're going to look internally first. And so those employee referrals, people that you talk about, okay, Nick, you took a lot of this. I can, I can actually introduce you to the hiring manager before this job even gets posted. So at least you've increased the likelihood that you would at least get an interview, right? And if you really do it right, most of the time you're gonna get a job. But you didn't go in asking for a job. If you go in and ask for a job, that's not network, okay? And if you do that, don't say I, don't say I talked to you, because I promise you, that's not network. Now, am I saying don't apply to jobs online? Certainly not. Not saying don't apply. What I'm saying is there's a strategic process, a strategic way Trust your coaches, work with us, don't just blindly apply. There is a strategy, okay? We, now, I've, I've applied to some jobs where I didn't have any contact there, any network. However, I met 80% requirements of the job. So in those cases, you say, okay, well, the likelihood is high that I'm gonna get selected, because I'm, I'm a good fit. In places where I was still a good fit, but I knew somebody, then of course, I was gonna build relationships first. But I'm a different animal when it comes to network. Like, I literally, will project out two, three years in advance. Say, okay, I want to be that place, so let me just build a relationship now and if opportunity, and Bev told you, <laughs> we talked for two years. My wife thinks I'm crazy. Like, I'll be talking, well, no, two years, and I say, are you crazy? What are you talking about? You know, I'm already preparing for something like two, I, I'll just do that because I like, I like networking, it's a relationship, but I like, I like the, the journey of networking. I'm not so focused on the destination because I know that's gonna happen. I, I really do genuinely like to meet people and like to develop relationships. Uh, I learn so much from other people, right? It helps me to do my job better, okay? So use the 80 20 rule. And don't worry, we'll talk more about that in one on ones uh, in an in a, um, NBA 16 class. So Karen has an activity that you're going to love. It's going to be great. But there's an 80 20 rule to everything. And just use that for the ratio of how much time you should spend networking versus just in your little cubby hole just applying the jobs. Like, don't think that you're being effective or even efficient if you say, hey, I've applied to 30 jobs this week. And I'm gonna say, whoa, 30 jobs? How about them that you connected with, you know, 10, of pe 10 new people this week that are in the, the type of uh, functional role or industry that you're interested in? I'd be more interested in hearing that because 30 jobs is way too much time. Like, I, I'm telling you, I, I, I don't even know if 30 jobs I'm gonna work for. Like, if you, if you were to say, hey, list like 30, 10, I, 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 can, I can do it. I can maybe get four or five places that I would really consider working. That's it. And I would just say, okay, well, I'm just gonna start targeting those places. That, that, that's what I would do, okay? But that's me, that's what works for me. You're gonna find what works for you, but I'm saying is be careful of just applying online at the expense of building relationships, okay? Use a mixture of both. Understand how to do it. Understand, you can't do this, um, Karen is a, imagine she's an alumni, NC State, I find a job on LinkedIn at a company that she works at. I apply to the job, and then I contact Karen. I say, Karen, hey, I applied to the job. Look out for me. Is that networking? No. No. It's, it's not. So I just want to make sure we're clear. Right? Also, it's, not about, it's not about breath. It's kind of about depth, right? Yeah. 
right? It's not, it's not about throwing everything against the wall and see what sticks. It's not about quantity, it's about quality. So, so you really need to take the steps that Robert's already prepared you through, pre-orientation, what else can we do in 610, what we're gonna talk about today and tomorrow, um, and just really be deliberate about thinking through, doing your research, creating your company list, getting to know the networking of the alumni. It's, it's about spending the time and going deep. And you've got a much higher likelihood of coming out with a positive outcome versus just saying, well, you know, I applied to 100 companies, I don't understand why I'm not getting a call back. Because it's shallow, right? It's not deep, it's shallow. So make sure your, your mindset is that way. A lot of people really, that's shocking to them in terms of the job search. They think it's the more people I talk to, the more companies I have, the more resumes I send out, the more likely I'm gonna get a job. And that is not the way it goes. So just leave that aside if that's your thinking and, and open up your ideas to a new way of job search. Sage, sage advice. I mean, that's, you know. What are employers searching for? Who is this? Yeah. You gotta know me. Look for the one. And I had Karen laughing because we were talking about this slide. <laughs> Companies are looking for the one. They look for the one who can stop the bullets, right? <laughs> and then actually pick out the one bullet that was actually gonna hit them and hurt them. And then say, you know, we can actually see who actually shot that bullet at us. <laughs> They're looking for that person they can walk on board. I mean, every company wants that, right? Who's gonna say, no, we just wanna hire the lowest scum of the earth. <laughs> like, that's how we're gonna grow our company, by hiring the, the idiots. <laughs> we want the worst of the worst. T tell me, I wanna know, is there a company that's trying to be a top company and attract talent? Is there strategy to say, no, 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 you're just a little too smart for us, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. You're gonna actually make us money. No, I don't want that. So they are looking for people who can just demonstrate, you know, literally, but big. You know, pick, you know, just show them that you understand their business. They're looking for people who, who can show them and can communicate that they're able to contribute, okay? So speaking of the matrix, where are you? And that's what Bev alluded to earlier. When you come into my office, I have this up basically where we're gonna sit when we got one-on-one. -on -one. And I'm gonna always ask you, where are you in this matrix? Because depending on where you are, that's gonna dictate what we talk about, right? So you gotta get some clarity around where you are on this matrix, okay? So don't worry, if I can send this to you by email, it's in my office, so don't, you know, and I'm gonna see the slides anyway, see that on you. This career change matrix, just be conscious of this. I'm gonna always ask you about it, and just make sure that we do a check. Hey, where are you on this? Are you still trying to switch careers? Are you trying to stay in the same industry? Are you switching industries, the same function? All of that, okay? Now, what should you do? Job search like an MBA. What does that mean? Somebody, tell me, what does it mean when I say job search like an MBA? Yep. What else? Trade like business. Very key. Mm -hmm. Strategic and fo focus, treat it like a business. Like, really, man, we can stop there. <laughs> and your experiences specifically to whatever job you're seeking. Exactly. And Bonnie, you mentioned this, one of the things he got out of what you guys just read, that professional presence, being polished. All right? You notice how Bill, she came up to each of you, shook your hand, looked for your name tags, you know, eye contact, the things that, you know, are going to be the expectation of an MBA level candidate. That's just part of the game. That's part of what you signed up for when you got an MBA. It wasn't, I just want to get this degree, I don't have anything else better to do. Like, people would expect you to sound different. Like, when I told people back in the day I was an engineer, a lecture engineer, what, what do you think the first thing they used to ask me to do? They said, fix something. Fix something. <laughs> well, you got, you're a lecture engineer, you ought to be able to, I mean, they just figured I could do anything that was electrical related. <laughs> so, once you open your mouth and tell people that you're studying in an MBA program, or you have an MBA, they would expect you to sound and act like somebody who they perceive to have an MBA, which are gonna be business professionals and leaders that they associate with these advanced professional degrees, okay? So we're gonna go over that. Those will be the things that, in the course, that we're gonna be building on and reinforcing, okay? So that'll be that higher level math, okay? We just realized that having the MBA gets you more access, but it also comes with higher expectations. So truly, I mean, I, it is a degree of business, so I'm gonna say something that's incredibly unpopular and, and again makes you know doesn't really sit well with the millennials in the room. Um, but business is a lot of times about conformity. 
so as you go through, especially the job search process, um, I mean, Roderick, I spent a lot of time, so I have emails to send, I spent a lot of time telling you guys what business attire was and what business casual attire was. You get one chance to make a first impression, okay? You don't get a second chance to make a first impression. So think everything from head to toe. I said earlier about your brand and your, your name tag, but it's, it's how you look. It's your handshake. No fishy handshake, it's a strong handshake. It's your eye contact. It's your first email you send some, to somebody. It's your first thing you see you say out of your mouth. Every one of those are firsts, and the expectation is really high that it's an MBA level. Um, and the conformity thing comes into, there's a uniform. There's a uniform for interviewing. You have all unique qualities. Allow those to shine in very careful ways, but you don't want to stand out for the wrong reasons. Because as you stand out, there, recruiters are as much looking for people to eliminate as they are looking for people to say yes to. It's a lot easier to just be like, ding, 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 and now I have a smaller group of people that I actually have to think about, right? So don't get in the ding pile for doing a silly thing like saying something inappropriate or drinking too much at a cocktail event or walking in late to a corporate presentation or being inappropriately dressed. You never want to be dressed lower than your recruiter that's sitting across from you. All those little things, right? Don't have a typo in your email. There's just so many little things that are not MBA quality. So you really have to raise your expectations and hold yourself to a really, really high standard, at least until you get the job. <laughs> you know. All right, so to sum it up, strategic preparation is key. So like Greg was alluding to, Dana, treat it like a business. It is strategy. Like, I'm applying every day I learn for my MBA, from engineering, from all my work experiences, Basically, it's mark like I used to work in marketing. Well, I worked in marketing, and so I combined what I learned in marketing with engineering with my passion of just you know this this space. And it's a business. This is my business, right? Now you can't get a degree in it. <laughs> like it's not like it's a job function in terms of, from a corporate level, you know, in terms of job or strategy, you know. But it is key, you know, in terms of helping the organization, helping you to achieve your career goals, so that you can get that job. So I'm. I'm working for you guys, right? So that's my, 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 you're like my client. The recruiter, his clients are the hiring manager, right? And so, like I told you, like, as they're trying to, you know, get the, the right talent, I'm trying to help them to get the right talent. I'm trying to prepare you to say, okay, well, I gotta make sure my talent, my, my, my people, my personal brand, my product, they're good, because I want you to, to, to say, hey, that's what I like. They're the perfect person and pass them on. So this is why it's so important to know your superpowers, know yourself. All right, so that's what we started with CM, the, the CMC pre-orientation. I'm not gonna reiterate everything. The research, you all had to do research. So you, you, you all had to do it. And trust me, even if you, like most people, we had a very high percentage that finished all of the CMC modules. And if you did finish, don't, be, don't feel bad, because you still had to do it. <laughs> so don't think you got away. Don't say, oh, but I didn't, I didn't do everything. Well, but you will, because it's gonna give you. <laughs> it's gonna, it, whatever you didn't finish, it would just be a mandatory assignment for the, for the the 16 quarters. If you finish it, you're good, because now you don't have to, you just build on it. Versus trying to say, oh man, I gotta do this in the fall. So I would try to just knock it out before fall fashion start, but that's just me. But it will, you're gonna have to finish it, because it's just that important for me to be able to help you to do my best, I need you to do your best. You gotta meet me halfway. You can't not skimp and think, well, Sarah did all hers, I did 50% of mine, but I want the same outcome as Sarah. Wait a minute, she did all her stuff. Like, I can talk a high level with her because we're starting up here with you. I still gotta explain stuff that you should have done three months ago. Like, why? No, I, uh -uh, I'm not having that conversation. Go do that first because in the fall, we don't have time to teach all those things. In the fall, it is really go, go, go. I'm trying to teach you at that point to enhance, how to enhance your skills so that you can be prepared for the job. I'm not trying to say, well, let me just talk about you know the basics of how you use design a resume, but I'm like, are we still talking about that? <laughs> no, no, we're trying to get all that out of the way. And, and the fault is like, hey, let's look at what you have, and let's see how we can help you enhance the value of the resume bullet that you have versus trying to start over from ground zero. So know your company research and know your, your fit. So what are your expectations? Because ultimately, you've got to tell your story, right? Ultimately, it's not about what I say, let me tell you guys a little secret. So for some reason, I don't know, John, he, he mentioned to me one time, and, and even before John, like for some reason people think that well, if I get into the full-time MBA program, I've got it made. 
because they'll give you a job. Like, if somebody sold you that bridge, they'll sell it back. <laughs> I have, look, let me tell you, I wish I was that important. I wish Proctor and Gamble would just take my word alone and say, Josh, no, just hire Josh. Take my word for it. Give him 100K. Hell, give him 120K. I wish they would take my, it doesn't work like that. Like, I build relationships with recruiters, right? I mean, I can influence in terms of saying, hey, why don't you try to post a job? We got some talent. Or, hey, why don't you come on campus? They might have some pool there at some point, depending on the relationship I have, or Bev, or Olivia, or anybody on the team. But we can't get you hired. Like, what we do is teach you how to be hireable, how to get yourself hired. That's a totally different value proposition. We don't get you the job. We help you to get the job. It's like, you remember that commercial BASF? They say, you know, we don't make a lot of the things you buy. We make a lot of the things you buy better. But that's basically what we do. <laughs> now, we don't get you the job, but we make sure that you are so well prepared to where the likelihood of you achieving whatever your career goal is is going to be higher than if you didn't work with us at all. Now, don't get me wrong. We are not the gatekeepers to your career glory. Like, right? I'm not, I'm not a, a barrier, I'm not the middle man. I hold no powers. I told you, I'm that little ferry man. Just takes you across the, <laughs> the river. You say, hop on the ship, where do you want to go? It's going to try to guide you the right way. Don't shoot the message, okay? That's zero pull with coming. So I'm going to help you to be accountable for developing your ability to communicate what you need to. I'm going to help you be accountable for developing skills that you've identified that you lack based on your research, based on the career goals that you have. A lot of our job will be helping you to figure that out and helping you to latch onto something that you are so motivated to do that, man, it's just like, okay, go, because you know what you want to do. You're going to be so motivated to achieve it, and I don't have to be like push you to do anything. Because if I'm pushing you, like if I'm more invested in your job search than you are, something's wrong, right? <laughs> Seriously, like if I'm getting pissed off because you're not applying, like, why am I getting pissed off? <laughs> you're not going to give me 10% of your, you know, of, your, of your salary. I mean, like, you have to take the ownership. My concern is going to be like if you're not taking any action. That's when I'll say, hey, what's going on? You know, let me work with you, help you. Something's going on. Because I'm telling you, once you latch on to what you're passionate about, I mean, really, it's like, it's like Roger Federer. Do you think anybody has to tell him, hey, you know what, you need to practice? <laughs> you just, you just, you know, Roger you slipping, you don't practice. How about the Brian James? Anybody tell him, you know what? Just practice the run, you can get a little better. He's a coach's dream. And I look at you guys in the same way, like professional athletes. So whatever the sport that you told me you like, that's how I now view you. Right? Going, sailboating, you know, anything. Marathon running. So my goal is just really to say, how can I help you get better? Because you're already passionate about it. I'm just trying to help you get better to achieve that goal. Just trying to say, hey, what about this little technique? Let's watch this or watch that. Because if any tennis coach that Roger, Roger Federer has, is that tennis coach ultimately going to win the U.S. Open for Roger Federer or Wimbledon? Now, the tennis coach is not out there playing. But the tennis coach helps Roger Federer, how? How does the tennis coach help Roger Federer? What was that? Focus on the gaps that they may have. And what else? Keeps understanding the competition. And what else? Keeps them accountable. Keeps them accountable. What else? Right. Keeps them in the right kind of progress. Preparation. What else? <coughs> motivation. Motivation. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's really mental. All right. Technique. They're just helping them, you know, just improve. I mean, Roger Federer started one about 20 something, you know, years open. I mean, years open. Uh, open right? Maybe. And so the coach's job is to say, hey, how do I keep this ship moving in the right direction? You're clearly motivated, but you still need somebody to keep you on the right path because the competition is coming for you too. And as soon as you just say, hey, I don't have to practice anymore, people come back to you just overtake. Okay? So that is the game. The one challenge to the Roger Federer uh, analogy is Roger is only focused on tennis. Although when he had his twins, maybe that was a little bit of a distraction, right? <laughs> he had a couple of down moments there. But you guys are going to feel like you have a lot of things you're focused on. That's going to be your biggest, I will tell you, that's going to be your biggest challenge. Time management and, and project management, managing this whole process. Because you're going to have classes, and you're going to have deliverables to classes, and you're going to have social lives, and you're going to have your own families and your own lives outside of, of James that you're dealing with. And then you're going to have this job search. And so 
So that's where the potential for losing focus or, or kind of prioritizing differently is, is going to be, um, that's going to be what you're going to face. And, and that you need to keep the intensity alive while having still a good time and, and come to us if you need to kind of take a breath. And Chandra mentioned earlier, kind of like laugh with her. Um, we don't make this too overwhelming. But you are going to want to make sure that you spend as much time on career search as you spend on one of your classes. It's like really good to kind of allocate time out that's like a class time. And literally, you know, okay, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, it's going to be my, you know, career time from 10 to 1. And, and that's it. And so you focus it as, as evenly as you focus. Because first year, the first semester is always the toughest in an MBA program. You're going to have a lot of new classes. Some of you haven't been in school for a while. Um, and so that's going to be a challenge for you. But it's balancing that with the job search and being able to fit everything together. That's going to be the biggest thing I think you'll, you'll find most difficult. Um, and so that's where we can help. We can help you think through that and help you stay on milestones. And rather, you know, don't ignore his emails because those emails are awesome, right? The way they just keep you on task and just, just follow the script he's giving you and you're going to be in good shape. I'm good business. I mean, ultimately, we do business. Ultimately, when you make an appointment with me, it is a business relationship. We're doing business during our one-on-one -on -one sessions. We have objectives, we try to reach goals, even within that one-hour session. And I want to earn your business, because we are service providers. This whole CMC team, we are service providers, right? You pay for it as part of your tuition, why not use it, right? You don't have to use it. No, I have to use it. <laughs> Very smart. But there's nobody, you know, there's some mandatory requirements in terms of, you know, just meeting with me at least once. But outside of that, you don't have to just, you don't have to use it. So we want to earn your business because we want you to use this. Like, I won't be happy if I'm not seeing students. It's not like, okay, I hope, ooh, I hope I don't see the students this week. <laughs> like, the conversations we have, we, all we talk about, you know when people love their job, like, even when we just have a small child, we usually talk about you guys. Like, you know, we could be talking about something else, but you know what, we just talk about something I really want to talk about. Most of the time we just talk about MBA stuff, the recruitment game, job search strategy. I mean, we just like talking about it. And so we want to see teachers. We want to see students. Like, we literally, we have appointments, appointments scheduled, not just to be placeholders. I hope nobody signs up. This is man. Oh, I got some stuff I can be doing. I can be watching videos, being caught up on Netflix. You know, man, no, I want you to sign up. Like, use the service. Like, let us earn your business. Because ultimately, you do have a choice whether to use us or not. And give us a chance. You know, we've already had a relationship. I know I've had a relationship with you already because I'm your primary coach. But you may want to meet with other coaches as well. You know, and there's a process for that. So, you know, you'll meet with me first. But I may not be the right person for you. I don't take it personal. And may, maybe you someone say, you know what, you need some chance. And we have a process for that. So we'll say, look, Let's work with our four-time coaches first. And we'll see, you know, if between Karen and I, if it's like, okay, well, you know, we'll say, you know, you need to actually, there's somebody better for what you want to do, then we may refer you to Stephanie or even John. Okay? And so, but we have a process for that. Just trust our process and just know that we're not so arrogant to where we're like, you know what? Um, if I can't solve your problem, then nobody can. Like, trust me, I'm, I'm not that arrogant. Trust me, I'm not. Like, if I really feel that, you know, Karen could really give you some good advice because I know she's worked in this area or she's got better experience in this area. I see her too. I'm more than happy to refer you to Karen. And we Karen and I talk about that. You know, so I said we have a process, just trust our process. Okay. And then you'll be the better for it. Like I what I can promise you, and I can assure you, and I'm, I'm gonna close so we can break for lunch. Gosh, you know, can you see lunch is outside that? It is. Oh then look at perfect. What I can promise you is that nobody will walk away from a session with myself, Karen, Stephanie, John, or any of the coaches worse off. Like you would never walk away and say, man, I really feel like an idiot now. You're talking about it. <laughs> you, it won't happen. Okay? You might so, have some red marks on your cover. <laughs> I mark a couple of so I won't work it out. So with that, but still good. I'm going to break because now I'm going to stop because now we are entering our lunch period. So remember, we're going to have First Citizens Bank here to do a lunch and learn. So if you could go out, get your, your lunch, bring it back in here, and just get it you know, seated as quickly as possible so that they can come in and get started. Uh, Thank you guys for coming.